Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in for another Elden Ring boss guide. This time we're taking on the duo gargoyles, the valiant gargoyles. One has a straight sword and uh, what's the other part? A halberd, yes. And then the other one has a twin blade and an axe. This fight is something that a lot of people consider extremely tough, including myself. I will say right away, the best way to take this on is with a strike-based weapon, as they have the least resistance to that. But we're, we've been doing this playthrough with, with curved swords, so we're going to keep on doing that with what we have going on. Now, the biggest thing you need to work out for here is the poison. The poison not only does a good amount of damage every tick, but also it does a good amount of damage over time, of course, at, you know, being poison. So you just try to, you know, avoid it as much as possible. I'm not very good at that myself, but I'm going to try to do my best in this video to show how to get away from it. Uh, basically, it has two different variants where they'll blow it at the ground and it's a big area around them, like the actual gargoyle. And then the other one, if they throw it out in a wave, they blow it at the ground and it goes towards where you are. So you need to make sure that you run out of the line of it. From there, it's a lot of just timing your attacks in between their attacks. So let's see if we can uh, show how to do this a little bit. You see the first one is right up there and it will run towards us after doing a quick uh, sword attack. It always starts off with the same sword attack I've found. Here we go. Yep, there it is. Try to avoid getting hits. And I like to la land a lot of jumping attacks because it's, uh, it lands the most damage for me. You can see as well, there's the poison. You just need to get the heck out of the way of it. Don't get hit by the home run swing. And just try to find moments to land jump attacks in between the gargoyles attacks. You will see that the other gargoyle will spawn at about 50% health of the first gargoyle, so make sure that you are ready for that when it happens. Once this gargoyle hits 50%, the other one will jump in and charge at you. And from there, it's a balance. I would say that the main thing you want to do is focus on the first gargoyle. Just keep whittling it down as much as you can. The other gargoyle is now on the way. Here it comes. Roll these attacks. Just keep hitting. Just keep hitting as much as possible. And now we have to do the balance of both of them at the same time. Here's the second type of poison attack where you see how it comes out at me at a wave. Now again, make sure that you focus on the first one. You want to make it so you only have to fight one at a time. So just keep focusing on the first gargoyle that you started the fight with as much as possible. You see, you will see that it will constantly run away from you, and you'll have to deal with the attacks from the other one, including poison and other combos with twin blades and axes. But you just want to find the right moments to attack the first one and get rid of it ASAP. You'll see that the other one will be a little more aggressive, while the first one you fought will generally be a little more passive a lot of time. The game does that on purpose to try to get you to switch up your attacks, to which one you're focusing on. But don't let the game fool you. Focus on the one with lower health first. Just avoid the twin blade as much as possible, but also try to work as hard as you can to keep it on screen too. Avoid this. Dodge that. Land our attacks. Oh, we almost got them. All right, the first one is down, and that's going to make this fight a lot easier. Now, I do find the one with the twin blade a lot more difficult because it also has an earthquake-causing axe. The twin blade attacks are very... They have a lot of frames to them because it's basically two blades swinging at you at once. So you need to make sure that you uh, make a choice of either going in close and dedicating to being close or just keeping your distance. I choose to keep my distance and just stay away from it as much as possible. The axe, however, I will get underneath them and strike like crazy because I found that I find the axe to be a lot easier to avoid. So this is what we're doing here. There's the poison. We run away from it. Stay away from the poison. Don't let yourself get hit. Dodge the stomp. Dodge the axe. Land a jump attack. Run away from the poison. And this is going to be the cycle we repeat over and over. Eventually, it will pull out the twin blades again, in which case I will, you know, take my distance again because I find it very annoying to melee against. Specifically because of this attack here. But as long as you have your distance, it won't hit you. It has two variants of that attack where it'll do like a quick burst at close range there. And then another one where it'll swing around, jump in the air, and then fly at you. Now, when it flies at you, you need to make sure that you dodge. Like, I try to dodge towards it because when you dodge towards it, it makes it so it minimizes the amount of frames that the windstorm there can actually hit you with. And it gets you out of the range so that way you don't have to deal with all the frames of it. 
See how many times he just swung that in like one second? This is why I try to avoid uh, just fighting the twin blades and try to wait the axe out as much as possible. Because that right there is a nightmare to me. I do not like fighting against that at all. So I'm just trying to wait out the axe. Here it comes. Avoid the earthquake first. And then we run in and go melee. Oh, I didn't think that would hit me there. But that's okay. We can now start landing our own attacks. Avoid the poison. The poison is something that they will do every time you're too close to them when there's one. When, they, when there's two of them, they'll basically just do it no matter what the range because they can send out the wave. The only time they do the wave version of it is if there's two of them. I need to back off and heal. Avoid the earthquake. We get close. Never mind. Here's the twin blades. All right, let's try to get in close and fight the twin blades so we can try to show how this works. It is very much so like all the other attacks, except, you know, the twin blades have a very wide range and he becomes more mobile with it. He's just jumping around like crazy. The big thing that I fear is just the storm attack right here, this. Okay, we dodge towards him, so that way we're out of range. We minimize the frames, run in, land a good hit. Avoid the attacks as much as you can. Avoid the earthquake, and now we get in close for more attacks here. I find this to be much easier than the Twin Blade once again. Land our hits, back off from the poison. Now, I could be using things like Bloody Slash to land a lot more damage, and I'm sure you have your own Ashes of War, and a lot of you guys will be using summons and stuff like that, and that will help you out a lot. I like to show in my videos how to do it without that type of stuff. I almost died there. So that way, any variables that you choose to include in your fight as well will just make the fight that much better for you. Avoid that. Dodge that. Another attack. And there we go. That is the twin, or the duo, Valiant Gargoyles. You can see as well, when you win the fight, you get Gargoyles Greatsword and the Gargoyles Twin Blade. You can get their other weapons as well from the other Gargoyles you can find in the game. You find one over in Lanedale on your way up to uh, go fight uh, the Spirit of Godfrey. And then you find another one on your way to Lanedale out on the road, which drops another weapon too. Anyways, guys, I hope this video does help you. I know it's a bit messy. This fight is never easy. It's just, there's just a lot going on here. But I hope this video does help you out at least a little bit. Thank you for tuning in for it. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And I'll see you soon for more.